Settle back now, content, comfortable, well-fed, and ready for some fine entertainment. Is everybody happy? Then let's go. It's showtime. Yes, it's the Candlewick Green Christmas Show. Tonight, our guest artists are Nick Miller, Jimmy Cricket, The Shakers, and much, much more. Everybody. Welcome to the Candle Green Christmas Special. I'm Jimmy. I'm Teddy. I'm Alan. And I'm Derek. And together, we are Candle Green. Candle Green. Candle Green. Candle Green. Candle Green. Candle Green. Hi everybody, Merry Christmas. We've got a great show for you tonight. A mixture of nostalgia, music, and comedy. Comedy. <laughs> Hello, Betty. Hello, Jessica. Hello, everybody. So let's give a big round of applause for the Liverpool Caverns Big Resonant Caverns Band Resonant at Liverpool, the band that played the caverns. <laughs> the the cool the shakers. Big round of applause for the shakers. No, no, son. You can't introduce them like that. Come on, let me have a go. So for our good friends from Liverpool, the fabulous Shakers, opportunity knocks! <laughs> to the cabin later on in the show. That takes me back, Jim. But I'll tell you a little story. There's, I was in a band called The DJs and the Beatles were looking for a band to go back to Germany with them as a support band, but we needed a girl singer. And John Lennon was there, uh, George Harrison and Pete Best and his mum. And I was in a little band called The DJs and we had a girl singer. So we went for an audition at Pete Best's mum's house in the Casbah. And we did the audition, but unfortunately I was too young, so I couldn't go. So, alas, missed out. That was great, that old great story. We count ourselves very lucky to be in the company of such bands as the Grumbleweeds, Black Abbott, the Baron Knights and the Rock and Berries, all top comedy bands. Also along the way we've met some fantastic comedians 
and made friends with them. But what we're going to do, we're going to take the comedian one tonight. We've put them together and it's a clip, one clip. So we hope you enjoyed these. Let's have a look. Ladies and gentlemen, it's the comedians. <laughs> What's the difference between a Rockweiler pissing up your leg and a Cocker Spaniel pissing up your leg? You let the Rockweiler finish. <laughs> Before the start, is there any Germans in? <laughs> Come on. I was in Butlins last week and there was 20 of them. Butlins, yeah. I thought he liked camps. <laughs> You get it? Go on, put your hands up the Germans. Put two hands up and then I'll recognise you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've had a barney with a woman in the post office. I took a parcel in. She said, this is too heavy, you need another stamp. I said, another stamp will make it heavier. And there's more. She gave me this stamp. She said, do you want to stick it on yourself? I said, no, I want to stick it on the parcel. <laughs> and I was coming out and this woman came up. She said, could you see me across the road? I said, hang on, I'll run over and have a look. <laughs> when you go to your work in the morning, like eight o'clock or whenever you start, you don't sort of go eight o'clock and into it. You sort of relax. And scratch your ass. <laughs> and read the paper and look out the window. Well, this is me at my work. This is, this is me, I'm doing it. I'm not in a yop scheme, this is what I do. <laughs> and that Prince Charles, he'll never be king, will he? Imagine the size of the stamp. <laughs> the, uh... <laughs> the coins would have handles on them. I went to one of them seafood stalls. Have you ever tried to eat a whelk? Have you ever tried a whelk? I was chewing it for four and a half hours. I took it out of my mouth, there wasn't a mark on it. Have, have you ever tried them winkles? Them, them little black things, they give you a pin to eat them with. Bogies with crash helmets on. <laughs> if you had eaten them on a sandwich, you wouldn't go near it. <laughs> and the other little proof, I went into a cobbler's. He went into a cobbler's with a pair of boots. He said, I want these sold. He came back the next day, the cobbler gave me a dollar, and he said, I've sold them. <laughs> and there was another Liverpool fella. These jokes are full of Liverpool fellas, eh? He went into a, a photographer's. <laughs> Went to a photographer with a photograph of his dad. He said, I want this photograph of his dad reproducing. But I want you to do him without the ball of hat. So his dad had a ball of hat on. And the photographer, being very obliging, he went, yes, sir, certainly, sir, yes, sir. I think you can manage that, sir. And just as he was going out, he said, oh, by the way, sir, what way did your father have his hair parted? He said, well, you know that when you take the ball of hat off. <laughs> I'm very soft-hearted, really. I am, honestly. I wouldn't harm a fly. And I, ne I never use these fly killers. Never. I use this. Instant starch. 
Just to kill them. But they glide out the window like that. <laughs> if you walk on the way, you will be very tired and very thirsty. Would you like a big bottle of brown beer? What kind of A big bottle of brown beer and some brown bread and butter or a shandy? A shandy. Yes, yes, I'm very pleased to be in the future. And... Now you're going to do the alphabet backwards. Huh? The alphabet, 26 letters of the alphabet. Are you going to do the alphabet backwards? No. Good, good. I'll tell you what to do. Sing. Sing. Sing a little song to the ladies and gentlemen. What would you like to sing? What do you know? Just, don't mess about. Just sing a little song. What would you like to sing? When the red, red robin gong, 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 gong. <laughs> The Irishman was on that program, Mastermind. A maggoty magazine said. <laughs> Who was born in the stable and had thousands of followers? He said, Red Room. <laughs> he said, finish the following song title. Old MacDonald had it, he could farm. <laughs> Spell it, he said, E-O-E-O-O. <laughs> Where are you he said, ma'am, two days of the week beginning with tea. So today and tomorrow. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Even I laugh when I hear them every night. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching The Comedian. Hope you all enjoyed that. We've got more comedy coming on later in the show. But now it's question time. A question from Alan, who wants to know what was my first drum kit and how much did it cost? My first kit was an Olympic. And how much it cost? Well, I can't quite remember, Alan, because it was 1960. But I bought it from Frank Hesse's uh, by the tunnel. And a question from Debbie. Did I ever sing with the band? Well, really, I did, Debbie. Because we, when we did the comedy impressions, I did quite a few. I did Tina Turner, Ginger Spice, uh, Frankie Goes to Hollywood, Kate Bush, and a couple of other things. So, really, I did sing with the band. I have a question from Mary. Mary wants to know, what venue did I favour out of all the venues that we done with Canva Green? Um, and it's very hard to answer, to be honest with you, Mary, because we've done that many different venues. Because we had a hit record and we were a household name, um, we were up and down the country all the time. But I would say it was nice to get back home. So it would be between Allison's or the Wookiee Hollow, probably Allison's, to be honest with you. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. I have another question from Linda, and she wants to know why did we disband? Well, to be honest with you, we were never actually disbanded in that in the sense of the word. We retired. I don't know whether that's a better word, but that's what we've done. And um, plus the fact that, you know, we can't get away from the fact that the cabaret scene was starting to take a bit of a bang and places were closed and left, right and centre. So we just thought that, you know, 31 years, I mean, I was with the band 30 years. The band was gone before I joined them. It's a long time to stay on the road. I don't think there's many people could could um, say that they've done that. But I hope that answers your question anyway. And thanks for your question. Thank you. Stop. A question from Patricia. She says, whose idea was it to go on Opportunity Knox? Well, when we first started as the band, 
we all got together and decided we were only going to go somewhere. So we wanted our comedy and our music to be as one. We did an audition for Opportunity Knox at the John Lewis Theatre early on in our career, but nothing happened there. Then the second audition we did was at Jacob's Biscuit Factory in Aintree, Liverpool. There were lots of people there, just like, you know, the X Factor. Anyway, they took pictures of us, did some sound recordings and said, we'll get back to you. But they didn't get back to us for about two months. And then we were on our summer season in the Southport Dixieland show bar. And a guy called Lou Fine came in, who was really in touch with the Opportunity Knox team. And he said, I think you'll really go well on Opportunity Knox. So he ran them. They reviewed the tapes, reviewed the sound. Next thing, they rang us and he said, you're on the show on the 23rd of November. And then we went on to win it seven times. So hope that answers your question, Patricia. The second question for um, Graham, any regrets? We haven't got any regrets because everything we really plan to do, like go on television, make a record, travel around the country, go with a big agent, it really all came true because on Opportunity Knox, uh, um, an agent called Dave Forrester, who was the agent for Ken Dodd, his daughter saw us on the television and recommended that uh, dad to uh, viewers. And he had, he had um, Ken Dodd, the Grumbleweeds, Mike Yarwood, lots of big acts. So we went for an audition with him, passed it, and he took us on his books. And from there, we did the Mike Yarwood show, Ken Dodd show, went all over the country doing the big shows. And so overnight, we were up in the air. Then we went to make our first record, Who Do You Think You Are, which was a great hit, you know. Anyway, Jenny, have you ever fallen out or had any fights? with anyone in the band because it looks too sweet you couldn't go on for that long and the truth is yeah we, we, we didn't have any fights no we had sort of maybe disagreements about which song we should put in but we never argued about oh you know i don't like you you don't like me there was never any fisticuffs or anything like that we all got on really really well and i think that was the answer to why we said of our, our success we were never bickering with each other no one was trying to outdo each other someone had been did a bit of comedy, music from Derek, playing great guitar, Alan, great drummer. We just all glued together, and from that, we became Candlewick Green. So I hope that's answered some of your questions on Question Time. Hello again. I have a question from Annie. Why has Terry Webb lost his lo lovely Liverpool accents? You're joking, aren't you, Annie? There's nothing changed, Gail. Uh, and ended up with a posh accent. Uh, long story short, when I moved to London, it was with my eldest son, Stephen. Uh, he was 10 then, and he was doing Oliver at the London Palladium. And during the day, he was going to his stage school. He had a scholarship to a stage school in London, Sylvie Young Theatre School. Uh, and they said he really needed to drop his northern bits, i.e. fast, last, past. And he needed to use fast, last and past. Um, so obviously he was uh, training himself at school uh, and lessons and when he was doing jobs and work, uh, jobs, I mean, and acting jobs, not to use fast, last, past. But obviously when he came home, I was still saying fast, last and past. Um, so I had to change to help him to make, so all he ever knew was fast, last and pass. So I adopted that and I still use it today, like laugh. Uh, but I can still talk like that all once, you know what I mean? Ah, it's all mess, lads. But when you go into business, I'm still in business. If you're going to talk to someone about investing a uh, half a million pounds, you go, all right, mate, I'll do a fantastic job with your money. Like, you know, give us half a million and I'll put it in the bank for you. You, you know, they're not going to trust you very far. Uh, so it ended up being an amalgam of, of those two things that my uh, accents slowly but surely changed over the years. Hopefully you understand why I did it. Not because I'm snobby, I promise. Honest, dead honest, you know. All right, is that okay? Bye-bye. Right, second question. I have a question from Paul. Paul wants to know, is it possible that the group might 
get back together sometime in the future to perform, do comedy and music. Um, I think the thing is, Paul, never say never. We, we should never do that, should we? Uh, very, very difficult. I think because maybe you guys, your end, will think, yeah, just get on stage for an hour and do this, that and the other. We'd have to practice for months and months. I don't mean every day. We'd have to get together regularly. And we're all over the, we're all over the world, basically. Um, Andy is in Spain. I'm down here, London-ish. Jimmy's in Blackpool. Alan's in, I think it's Heighton now, and Derek's in uh, Liverpool. So us getting together and finding a place to practice, where would we go and when? The logistics would be an absolute nightmare. So I think that's probably what's holding us back. Not so much that we don't want to do it. It's just it would be a nightmare. You think of me if they said, right, we're going to practice in Blackpool. It would be a whole day for me just to get there at my age. <laughs> By the time I get up and get there, I'd have to stay overnight, maybe have another practice the next day. Uh, but I still have a business to run. So logistically at the moment, nightmare, but we'd never say never. It would be lovely. We'd all love to do it. Hopefully that explains the questions to you all, to your satisfaction. Uh, I will now hand you back to the next person. Bye bye. We're going to take a quick break, but we'll be right back after this. On your last trip, did you discover what the Earth people eat? They eat a great many of these. They peel them with their metal knives. Boil them for 20 of their minutes. Then they smash them all to bits. They are clearly the most primitive people. For much get smashed. Mind the banisters, son. Oh, I can't hold it back. Don't worry, son. I shifted more counters than you've had up to this. Creed. Creed, Mr. Schickler. Let me fresh me. Oh, thank you most kindly, madam. There's no other tea to beat PG. It's the taste. Dad, do you know the piano's on my foot? <laughs> you are it, son. I'll pay it. Welcome back. I think it's time for some music. Let's play a song that we recorded some time ago called Let's Dance. Hey baby, won't you take a chance? Say that you let me have this dance and let's dance. Let's dance, baby, let's dance. Let's dance, let's dance, baby, let's dance. Through the twist, the stuff, the most between. Let's dance, let's dance, baby, let's dance, let's dance, let's 
now it's back to comedy with our second round of comedy clips. Because as many of you have been in more than one hour, you will have missed the national news on ITN. The Argentinians have declared war on Ireland. <laughs> They've taken the key off the top of the corn beef tin. <laughs> and you can have an Irish abortion only as a 12 month waiting list. Uh, hate people that take drugs, you know, like customs officers and policemen. <laughs> I, phone the drugs helpline and you get this woman's voice and she went, if you want information on cannabis, press hash. <laughs> Last year in London, there was 100,000 people went marching to legalise cannabis. And they're all marching going, what do we want? <laughs> when do we want it? <laughs> what? I had a night off last night, so I phoned this place up. You know, they deliver to your house. Domino's Pizza. Have, have you ever heard them? Domino's Pizza. You phone them up and they... Well, I've got this prat on the phone. He said, hello, Domino's Pizza. Carl speaking. How can I help you? I said, well, have a guess, Carl. <laughs> I said, you wouldn't have a radiator cap for a 1979 14 <laughs> I got stopped by the police today. I'm, I'm doing like 100 miles an hour and they're coming behind me in the red lights and he pulled me up. He said, there, didn't you see the, uh, the, the, the flashing lights behind you? I said, did do. I said, but my wife ran off with the policeman about 20 years ago and I thought you were bringing her back. <laughs> And the funny book is out, he said, hey, let me have your own name. I said, what will I use then? <laughs> I came here, my missus made me some sandwiches. Some women can't cook, can they? I, took the, I said, hey, love, I phoned up with them sandwiches, are terrible. I said, where'd you get them? I said, I said, what was it? She said, crab paste. I said, where'd you get it from? She said, the chemist. <laughs> and there's more. There's more. One night it came in. Yeah. I don't want this to go any further. Come in. It came in. She said, where have you been? I said, the cemetery. She said, who's dead? I said, they all are. <laughs> She said, there's been a fella knocking the door with a beard. I said, it's a wonder you could hear him. She said, I'm giving you two days to pay your rent. I said, right, I'll have Christmas Eve and Good Friday. So especially for all the boys, for all the fellas, we've got a topless, a topless lady ventriloquist. Nobody's ever seen her lips move. <laughs> a bottle baby. My mother said she liked me as a friend, but it had to stop there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
gentlemen. Oh, I tell you what, great to be here at the London Palladium, isn't it? So bad. Not so bad. What's the matter with you tonight? Nothing, I'm all right, I'm all right. I know what it is. I know what it is. Shut it, shut it. Oh, I know. I'm all right, I'm all right. I know what it is. It's women again, isn't it? Hey, It's women. You've got, you've got woman problem, haven't you? What do you mean, we're women? Yes. <laughs> That's what it is. That was a stupid. Hey, Ladies and gentlemen, look at me, look at me. Problems with women. <laughs> I get sick of them. I go out with loads of birds. Loads of I go out with loads of birds. Oh yeah. How many have been out with them? Eh? How many have been out with one? One? Yeah. <laughs> I've been out with more than one. Yeah. Three? Oh, not as many as three. <laughs> <laughs> shut up! Shut up! <laughs> I'm a sex object. <laughs> what do you mean a sex object? When I want sex, the object. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Hello, Dickie. Hi, Dottie. Hmm. This is a very important show, Dickie. I want you to sing a nice song for the ladies and gentlemen. Yes. And if you sing it very, very nicely. Yes. You, you've seen that lovely, shiny, red bicycle in my dressing room? Yes. Well, I'll sell it to you. <laughs> <laughs> but even the kids in Liverpool are funny. The kids. That's where the humour stems from. Children and old folk. My little son, he came in the other day, he said, hey, Dad, Dad. I said, what is it, lad? He said, that teacher. I'm sure she fancies me. <laughs> I said, the teacher fancies you? How do you make that out? He said, well, she keeps putting kisses next to me sons. <laughs> and there was a fella around now, the other week, turned out to his lad, he said, lad, he said, knock at the door, go and see who it is. So his lad went to the door and he come back, he said, Dad, there's a man at the door with a baldy head. He said, go and tell him I've got one. <laughs> I, I, I got a letter from my mum as well. She, she writes to me now and again. I'll just read it to you. My granny sent me one once, you know, but this one's from my mum. It says, here are a few lines. Then she's written two straight lines underneath there. <laughs> here are a few lines with the family news. Um. You will be pleased to learn that your father now has a new job with 500 men under him. He is cutting the grass at the cemetery. Did you get it? And your brother John has joined the army. And he has only been in a fortnight and they have made him a court martial already. <laughs> And he is going away for six months to give Her Majesty pleasure. <laughs> and it goes on to say here, um, your father now has started keeping pigs in the backyard and there is an awful smell from your loving mother. <laughs> the doctor's meeting. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Mr. Flanagan, yes. He says, this is the general foreman here on the building site. The shuffles haven't arrived. What'll I do? He said, well, tell the lads to lean on each other till they come. <laughs> <laughs> Even I laugh when I hear them every night. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been watching The Comedian. Pegatis place. Twas like taking bread to the top of the world. Twas a grand ride back though. I knew Baker at Avcatlon and doorsteps about always ready. There's wheat German that loaf he'd say. 
Get it inside you, boy. And you'll be going up that hill as fast as you come down. Oh, this still has many times more wheat germ than ordinary bread. It's as good for you today as it's always been. should have been careful. There may be trouble ahead, but while there's moonlight and music and love and romance, let's face the music and dance. If your family suddenly grows, so too will your responsibilities. That's why Ally Dunbar financial plans adapt so you can face the unexpected. Let's face the music and dance. Welcome back to part three of the Candlewick Green Christmas Special. Hello folks. To all those lovely ladies watching the show tonight, what a beautiful day for running out, filling your tights full of ice cream, staying a cherry on your head and going, mmm, how's that for a nook of mocker glory? Fine, truth. But now, folks, now it's time for Jerry Remember Time. Or, or <clears throat> pardon me, or should I say, Do You Remember Time? The sweet, sweet memories you gave me, you kept me. You gave me. Terry, do you remember when we were doing the Opportunity and Ox show when we were introducing champagne from Liverpool and during the conversation with Huey Green he slapped you across the face in which you returned and slapped him across the face just tell us what actually happened How could I forget? <laughs> could have ended our careers he slapped me on live television without even warning me. We didn't rehearse that bit. So I was shocked uh, and I thought, shall I hit him back? And I did. And when you look at him, he was shocked as well. Um, and I thought, you know, am I doing the right thing? Will he stop the show? Tell me off. Could it be the end of our careers? <laughs> anyway, it went down well. So we have a look at that now. Let's have a look. The music, if you please, for our next sponsor. It's really marvellous, Lenny, to have you here tonight, and I understand that you've just made a wonderful new LP and that you'll be playing at Stratford-on-Avon this this particular coming Christmas season. Is is Di with you tonight? Yeah. Di's with you yeah. tonight. Well, isn't that nice? <laughs> Listen, you're not Peterson. Oh, no, Get no, off no. the stage. What is this? Ladies and gentlemen, I must, I must apologize. This is our producer, Keith Beckett. This is his fault for setting these ridiculous people up. Now, he tells me that the, the next real sponsor here is a man that we had for many, many weeks on our show, and he is a man that you all know and love, our musical muscle man, Tony Holland. Let's give Tony a big welcome. Tony Holland. <laughs> Listen, 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 you're not Tony Holland, you're not Tony Holland. I want the sponsor. Where's the sponsor? Are you the sponsor? No, Huey. Who's the sponsor? Huey Green. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean Huey Green's the sponsor? He's the real, the real Huey Green. What do you mean the real? The real Don't Green. be cheeky now. <laughs> Huey Green is the sponsor. I'm Huey Green. No, Huey Green is the sponsor. No, no. I I'm Huey Green. <laughs> well, thank you tremendously, friends. Thank you and welcome. <laughs> welcome, my lads, once again to your opportunity knocks. The fun, fun, fun show. <laughs> Because we all have fun on the show. Uh, 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 uh. 
The only sham I lost my darlings, my turtle doves and seagulls. The only sham. <laughs> The only show were you, the nation, and no, no, no panel of judges. You, the nation, I repeat. <clears throat> uh. <laughs> now listen, I want to find one for now. Just no, a second. No, I want to find Huey. I, I want to find this, I I this, find this, this guy. Me. This guy has done a lot for entertainment, and also this week, ladies and gentlemen, Huey is on the Morecambe and Wise show. Isn't that one? A little bit of a clap for you. A little bit of a clap. <laughs> going to go places because I've got a nose hey, for talent. Go places in any minute now. Now listen, who are you guys? Will you tell well, me? Well, Huey, we are Hellwick Green. Hellwick Green. Congratulations. Congratulations. May I say one thing? You look almost as ugly as I. <laughs> <laughs> Now, who are you? I understand that you just got a marvellous record. What's the name of it? We have, yeah. It's called The Last Bus Home, Huey. The Last Bus The Last Bus Home. Why well, try and get it, boys. I'll tell you, it's really good. <laughs> really? I don't mind. Excuse right. me. <laughs> who are you going to introduce on this Sweet, show? Sweet, sweet. Memories you gave me. You can't beat the memories you gave me. Sweet, sweet. Memories you gave me. Do you remember the time when we did the Tommy Cooper show? And he kept chasing us off stage. And we ended up falling over each other. Should we have a look at that? <laughs> Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. You're not supposed to be on now. I'm on now. No, 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 no. I'm on now. They told me the better. I'm on now. Not you. I think you better get off now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, ready? Go. Hey Derek, do you remember when we did the Vera Lynn TV show and we were all wearing straw boater hats? Do you remember? You had a nightmare trying to keep your hat on. You worried sick about it. I do tell you, I remember it well. What well, was we were doing a routine, dance routine for our latest record, which was called The Last Bus Home. And we were on the Vera Lynn show and we had straw boaters. And uh, very quickly I put my straw boater on but I put it on too far back on my head. So as we were dancing, it was moving further and further back. But I knew there was a gap in the song where I'd take the boater off and twiddle it round and put it back on again, which I'd done. When I put it back on again, I put it back on even further away on the back of my head. So anyway, that, that's basically the story. But how it never fell off, I don't know. Let's have a look at the clip. Switch out the light tonight All on your own Will you spare a dream for me? 
sitting out the last bus home I guess I missed the last bus out of town I let the world slip by when I'm with you And by the time I walked you safely home Too late I saw it disappear from you To sit here in the dark I can't afford a cat The way things are With one torn dirty dollar to my name I'll have to hitch my wagon to a star Spare a dream for me Sitting out the last bus home An old tin can to rest my weary bone I feel a drop of rain Fall out of my head The stars play when the world turns round on me so sweetly tucked up in your bed Oh, baby, when you switch out the light Tonight, all on your own Will you spare a dream for me Sitting at the last bus home Just a little story about a night at the South Pier in one of our summer season shows. We were doing the intro. The intro was, I'd come on stage with the lads. We'd all say, good evening. And then I'd announce, there's a gold star under one of the seats in the theatre. If you'd like to have a look. People would just then stand up, start looking under the seats. And at that point, I get a message from the wings. And I'd come back and say, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That's next week. Anyway, it went on this for three months and we didn't have a blemish, it was great. Everyone would start laughing. Then on the last night, which was the, the last night of the show, we went on and we said, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Candle with Green show. If you'd like to look under your seats, as a gold star. At that point, everyone started looking under the seats. I got the message from the side. Before I could say anything, there was a gold star here, a gold star there, a gold star at the back, a gold star in the front, a gold star, gold star, gold star. There was 25 gold stars, which obviously now I couldn't say anything. We just all collapsed, collapsed on stage. The audience started laughing because a lot of people had seen the show before. And that was it. Hal Nolan and the stage crew had stitched us up. Sweet, sweet. Memories you gave me, you can't beat the memories you gave me.
Well, I hope you enjoyed our Jerry member time, but now we're going to take you back to the cavern. And what we've done is we only had an audio, audio, an audio, an audio track for this. So what we've done is we put on top of it a track, a video from the Beatles, I think in 1962, singing some other guy at the cavern. We were overlaid one on top of the other. So hope you like this. It's the Candlewick Green Beatles. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah. She loves you, and you know that can't be bad. She loves you, and you know you should be glad. She said you heard her so, she almost lost her mind. But now she says she knows you're not the loving kind. Because she loves you, and you know that can't be bad.
Did anybody recognise the three guys at the end? Well, I'll tell you who they were. They were Len Gary, Colin Hansen, and Rod Davis, the Quarrymen, John Lennon's first band. But there you go. Right, at this point, we were going to take you out now on a high, we hope, of uh, playing our video from 1974, Who Do You Think You Are on Top of the Pops? Unfortunately, we can't find it, so. We've got no top of the bill, but Jimmy's come to the rescue. And Jimmy said he'll top the bill with a heartfelt song that you'll all love for Christmas. So before he does that, I'd like to say personally, thanks very much for being, supporting us all this time to all the members and all the people, all the uh, fans that we've got. It's really great. I mean, 40 years and to still have this going on is amazing. Hope you all enjoyed our Christmas special and look forward to your company on our next one. So till then, have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. A merry Christmas to all, and thank you for watching. All the best. Merry Christmas, everyone, and happy new year to everybody. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Happy new year. So have a happy Christmas, a great new year. We'll see you in the new year with more shows definitely in the new year. Okay, bye for now. Over to you, Jimmy. Go back.